The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Plaque Man! Hmm, that definitely doesn't seem to have the same ring to it as when I wrote the script for this game. But, in Tooth Invaders, you play as Plaque Man and must fight the Plaque Monster, DK. Okay, not very inventive with the names here, but obviously a play on words with tooth decay. This little plaque germ is covering all the teeth with his crap, which appears on screen as these little black marks, and he's fast. He scurries all around the digitised mouth and teeth, leaving his dirt and decay everywhere. Armed with a toothbrush and some dental floss, you need to energise your brush first with the Fluoride toothpaste, otherwise it won't work and clean up the mess left behind by DK, but also ensure never to make direct contact with the little green germ himself, or you'll instantly lose a life, and for some reason float into the sky on a flashing balloon, whilst a sad fanfare tune plays in the background. Or is it a lollipop? Ok, it's a lollipop. The other weapon at your disposal, the dental floss, has to be used to get the spaces in between teeth and the most important thing to keep an eye out for is if teeth start decaying, but you will get warning sounds to indicate this. At first glance, you might be wondering exactly whose teeth were brushing here, or if the workload is portioned out somehow, because in Tooth Invaders, you are being tasked with overseeing the protection and maintenance of two rows of four teeth each, upper and lower jaw. You control your stick figure wielding a toothbrush and a stick to represent a piece of floss by using the 8-way controls on the joystick, with the fire button only being required to zoom in and out, as the game technically has two modes. The overseeing mode where you get to see all 8 teeth, and the close-up mode, which you need to enter to be able to do any cleaning at all. It's fairly ingenious, particularly if it's true that Tooth Invaders was made by a boy in his early teens, and serves to give the game a certain sense of strategy, and you some advance warning that the bacteria thing is near. It's particularly important because you die on contact. Whisk the way to the great big tooth rot heaven in the sky, by the radioactive lollipop mentioned earlier. Thankfully, the game switches between the two modes quickly enough, so it's just a matter of being careful, which you will always have time for, since there is no particular time limit to this game, as long as you don't allow the teeth to fully rot, you can take as long as you need. One thing that thankfully makes this antibacterial warfare a bit easier, is that once you've completely cleaned out a tooth, that is, brushed it clean and flossed each of its sides thoroughly, a little fanfare will play, and the tooth will start blinking in a set of colours, marking it as completely clean and preventing the bacteria thing from damaging it any further. This leaves you to concentrate on the remaining ones in peace, though be warned, while the bacteria can't damage finished teeth, you will also then not get that telltale sound of it leaving marks on unfinished teeth, meaning that the more teeth you have cleaned out, the more careful you will have to be, because you'll never know where that green monster might be. And, as I've mentioned, it can drop out of nowhere and kill you dead. So, occasionally, going to full screen mode to check its whereabouts is highly recommended, especially near the end. It moves fast, true, but not that fast. Tooth Invaders is a marvellously goofy and fun concept, but sadly, it also has some limitations and niggles that might get on your nerves. The first and biggest problem is that you will only play that one stage, ever. Upon completion, the game merely resets you on the same stage with an even more effective bacteria thing making rounds, making the game a bit of a flight against repetition fatigue. And while the game controls fairly well, swapping between the brush and the piece of floss takes some time getting used to, because you can't grab the floss while you're holding the brush and vice versa. You have to put the brush in its stand before picking up the floss, which sort of works against the game, even if it makes logical sense. Adding to that problem is that it's not a matter of pressing the button to grab or place the brush or the floss. The button serves as a switch between zoom modes and nothing else. 
you basically have to run up to the stands and wait until your character places the tool of choice there, which he doesn't always do. And when he does, you have to make sure to first move away from the stand properly, or he'll just grab the piece again, forcing you to run back and stand around, hoping he'll put it back. This mild inaccuracy carries over to the brushing part of the game, where it can get a bit arbitrary about whether a smudge on a tooth will be cleaned out or not, and you'll sometimes find yourself waggling the joystick or running needlessly back and forth to get that last smudge off. That said, if this game is someone's very first coding attempt, or even someone's first attempt at a professional release, I'm still quite impressed. Especially if it's true that this game was made by a 14 year old. It does have that kind of homebrew, one man project feeling over it. Tooth Invaders, if it's not obvious by now, is pretty much about brushing and flossing teeth. Which, granted, might also be the only game about brushing and flossing teeth. But also, this game and its kind seems to fully embrace the craziness of the 80s. But it'll also always be very much part of my youth as this was one of the first ever games I played on my Commodore 64. Thanks for watching guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button and let me know your experiences with this game in the comments section. Maybe you had this on the VIC-20, I'd love to hear about it. It's games like this which made me fall in love with the Commodore 64 all those many moons ago. In fact, I was only 3 when this game actually came out. And as you can imagine, it was my first experiences with the computer, ever. I'll never forget those memories, and if these games have a similar effect on yourself, then be sure to hit subscribe and join me as we explore even more classic games from the Commodore library. There's loads on the channel playlist, all in order of release, so be sure to check those out, and hopefully, I'll see you there. Until then, bye for now.